Uh, hi there. So in this video, we're proceeding our Fourier analysis series. And this particular video, we are talking about the DFT and FFT. Uh, if you remember from the previous video, uh, which was about the DDFT, uh, we got the formula of the DDFT, which was x of f equals to summation x of nts e to minus j 2 pi f nts right and in order to get to the dft the discrete Fourier transform we have to get rid of everything that is related to time particularly we have this factor but TS. before that i would like to give you a motivation why we would like to get rid of ts why we would like to eliminate it uh, now, in practical application, you may encounter a discrete signal like, uh, like this, x, x of n equals to, uh, uh, I don't know, 1, 2, 4, minus 1, yes, just any sequence. And this sequence is stored in a computer memory like this, 1, 2, 4, and minus one but the thing is is the computer doesn't know what is the time separation between these samples uh, I mean if this is the sa the sequence four minus one and then we have two and one so the computer has the magnitude of these samples that's okay but doesn't know what is the time separation between them that is, the computer doesn't know what is the value of Ts. So, does that mean we cannot extract the spectrum of the sequence if we don't have Ts? Well, the answer is yes, obviously, but we can extract something related to X of F. We shall call it the normalized spectrum. So here spectrum. comes the definition of the discrete Fourier transform. Let's define it as summation x of n so instead of x of n ts we have x of n which is a pure discrete signal that lacks any sensation of time just pure numbers like like this like like this sequence one two four minus one it doesn't have any relation to time so x of n e to minus j two pi let's define a new variable here f prime dot n so where f prime is defined as okay f dot ts so f dot ts is replaced by f prime which is the normalized frequency norm frequency this gives you let's say x normalized of f prime okay because because the new function would be in terms of f prime, the only variable in this summation. Now, what's the advantage of the DFT and what's its relation with the DDFT? Well, obviously, the mathematical relation between them is given by x of f, which is the spectrum given by the DDFT, equals to x normalized of f prime dot, NT, dot ts. So, basically, it's a relation of uh, compression or contraction or uh, expansion depends on the value of Ts, which is uh, greater or less than 1. Uh, for example, uh, using this sequence, if we've calculated the, DDF, the D discrete Fourier transform, x normalized of f, and... Uh, x normalized of f prime for this sequence and appeared like this yes uh, I don't know uh, from 0.5 to minus 0.5 one cycle remember is supposed to be a periodic function that repeats itself and then somehow we found out the value of Ts can we use 
the value of Ts with the normalized spectrum to extract the original spectrum given Ts value. Well, yes, according to this relation, the actual XFF can either look like this, uh, from, uh, let's say, minus 5 to plus 5, so it is an expanded version of this, or it may look like this, which is a contracted version of the normalized spectrum. which uh, depends on the value of Ts, if it's larger than 1 or less than 1. So that's the advantage of the DFT. It gives you a normalized spectrum and gives you an idea about the pattern of uh, the spectrum, regardless of the actual scale of the frequency axis, which you can guess it after you find the value, the true value now, of Ts. Now, pay attention to these critical values, 0.5 minus 0.5, or plus pi at minus pi if we are talking in omega prime units. So the normalized spectrum uh, repeats itself uh, each and every one cycle per sample or 2 pi radian per sample duration. Because if you look at the definition of the discrete Fourier transform, We have minus j two by f prime n. You can look at, at, at look at, you can look at it as follows, as if we have assumed that T s equal to one, and we got the definition of the discrete Fourier transform. So minus j two by f prime n e2 minus j2 pi f prime n as if we have assumed that t s equal to 1 when n equal 1 we have e2 minus j2 pi f prime that's it and then with some factor of course here and then when n equal 2 we have e2 minus j2 pi dot 2 f of course with some factor and when this when n equal 1 n equal 2 when n equals 3, we have a factor and e to minus j 2 pi dot 3 f prime, and so on. And then eventually we get x normalized of f prime. So, this fundamental term, when n equals 1, this one is going to determine at which rate this spectrum is going to repeat itself. Now, the other terms, uh, they don't really affect uh, this value, but they help to determine the shape of this final pattern. But this duration is determined by this fundamental term, when n equal 1. Uh, this is a basic concept that we've learned from the Fourier series. Uh, the, the, all the difference was, instead of f, we, have, we had the time instead of f. So, it so doesn't really matter. So, this fundamental term have uh, this kernel minus j 2 pi f prime. That means if we are going to plot versus the f prime variable, this is going to repeat itself unit A of one. f prime. Let's say from minus 0 0.5 to plus 0 0.5, which is complete one cycle, or from zero to 1. This is also another complete So that's cycle. why the normalized spectrum is always limited by these values, minus 0.5, plus 0.5, minus 5, plus 5, because we have neglected Ts, or the matter of fact, we have assumed that Ts uh, equals Let's look one. at uh, an interesting point. What's the unit of f prime, the normalized frequency? Well, actually, as f prime normalized frequency is defined as f dot ts, this means uh, as the frequency is measured in uh, hertz, which is actually cycle per second, 
this actually hurts. And then we have TS, which is the reciprocal of FS. FS, the sampling rate, which is measured in sample per second. So TS is measured in second per sample. Okay, and then we end up with cycle per sample. This is actually a very interesting unit to measure a normalized This frequency. unit actually is the reciprocal of the duration of a cycle of a periodic discrete signal. Let's look at a random uh, discrete periodic signal like this. Point uh, 0.1 and then point 0.5 and then 1. 0 0.5, 1, 0 0.5, and so on. So this is a discrete periodic signal. We say within each two samples, one cycle is completed, which means the signal have a discrete has a discrete frequency or uh, a normalized frequency of 0.5 cycle per sample. This is F prime, which is the reciprocal of N. They say N, which is the duration of the signal. Another one, like this, uh, minus one, plus one, plus one, minus one, plus one, plus one, minus one, plus one, plus, and so on. So N equal to three, and then f prime equal to one third cycle per sample. Actually, we can think of a discrete periodic signal that has a frequency larger than this. So we can say that 0.5 is the largest discrete frequency ever. We can think of it. So f prime is always less than or equal to 0.5. Uh, so this is simply because you can think of a signal that has a discrete frequency of two cycles per second. There is no such a signal, uh, two cycles per, per sample, sorry. When, when you saw a single sample of this signal, you've determined that two cycles has been completed. How have you done that? This is impossible. Or five cycles per sample, which means within each one sample, five cycles are completed. This is impossible, and you can't you can't really determine that. 0.5 cycle per, per sample is the largest value that f prime can take, which we have shown here. 0.5 is the largest value. 0.5 and the duration of this periodic signal will be one cycle or per sample. in other words you can think of let's talk in terms of n you can think of a discrete signal that has n less than two samples per cycle this is the least duration that a discrete periodic signal can have which is two you can think of a discrete signal that has uh, n larger than that, for example, n equal 5. So each 5 samples, like this, complete one cycle, and then this repeats itself. This is another cycle. So f prime is 1 over 5, and so on. 